How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student and today we'll be talking about what is the average person's breast cancer risk after having top surgery. Believe it or not, breast cancer risk is always there regardless of someone's gender identity. Yes, estrogen is the hormone that correlates most to breast cancer risk but that doesn't mean that someone with low estrogen will not get breast cancer. Actually, breast cancer is uh, two big things. One is genetic. If you have a family history of breast cancer, you are more likely to eventually develop breast cancer. And two is estrogen does have a higher link to breast cancer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it leads to breast cancer. So before I go into the details of this video, I really want to emphasize that having breast cancer or developing high risk to breast cancer is a multifactorial thing because not only your environment but your genetics and your luck kind of plays into it the good news is that once you have top surgery done you eliminate a lot of those risk factors for breast cancer because in order for breast cancer to to develop you need to have breast tissue regardless of whether or not you get the different forms of top surgery such as periolar, double incision, fish mouth, and a bunch of the other new techniques that are being invented by plastic surgeons, there's going to be a huge reduction of breast tissue after you have that surgery done, which significantly diminishes your chances of developing breast cancer because you have a lot less breast tissue to become cancer. However, I really want to emphasize that top surgery mastectomies for trans people is completely different from mastectomies for people who have breast cancer. When people who have mastectomies for breast cancer have surgery done, the aim is to reduce as much breast tissue as possible, including the lymph nodes involved in the chest area, which means the surgeon will go in and get rid of any lymph nodes in your axillary or slash armpit region. The current methods for masculinizing top surgery includes the retention of some breast tissue so that the surgeon can create a more masculinizing feature after you have top surgery. This is especially important because the large majority of people that are getting masculinizing top surgery are transgender men and transmasculine non-binary people. However, there is a subset of non-binary people who choose to have no masculinization done when they have their top surgery, which I strongly encourage to have a discussion with your surgeon about reducing your breast cancer risk as much as possible, especially if you have a family history, if you are a non-binary person who doesn't really care for the masculinizing features. The large majority of transgender people who do get masculinization with, with their top surgery there is going to be residual breast tissue and that residual breast tissue does have the potential to become cancerous years down the road. What complicates things a little bit further is the fact that after you have top surgery done, it's really hard to get mammograms because your chest becomes flat. It, this is why it's really hard for cisgender men who have the risk of breast cancer or who have a lump to get routine screenings because mammograms are incredibly hard to do on flatter chests. Then the doctor decides to, you know, put you through an MRI, which is a lot more expensive than a mammogram. I mean, mammograms were invented to be a cheap way to detect breast cancer and breast tumors or benign cysts. So that option is going to be out for anyone who has top surgery done, such as myself. So we will have to opt in for other more expensive methods, such as MRIs, which I know that trans people are especially marginalized in the healthcare system because a lot of us don't have insurance and a lot of us are not wealthy. But luckily there are ways to do your own type of screening at home especially if you enter the fourth decade of your life in your 40s and your 50s it's really important to get that screening done and what you can do is a self breast examination i mean honestly i really think self breast examinations should be emphasized for anyone regardless of gender identity i really do think our medical system is failing cisgender men in this aspect because i think cisgender men also need to do self breast examinations 
for to reduce their breast cancer risk as well. Now, if you do feel a lump, don't freak out just yet. A lot of lumps are completely benign and does not require any form of medical intervention check to see if you can move that lump in that area if that lump is movable most likely it's not something serious and it's not something you have to get immediate attention on however if you feel a hard lump um, that's irregular it's not round and it's not moving that is something you should absolutely definitely get checked out that's very important for anyone in their fourth and fifth decade of life to be aware of and to get screening on if you feel something that is irregular, something that is hard, and something that is not movable. Actually, someone who is trans and in my personal life that I love very much actually did self-examinations and found a lump, my partner Dandy. Hi. And luckily, Dandy's lump ended up being very movable. We still got it checked out and luckily it didn't lead to anything more serious. And it was really important for my partner to get that lump screen because they had a family history of breast cancer. Again, I really want to emphasize the fact that getting top surgery done is a great way to significantly reduce your breast cancer risk. The risk of having breast cancer after top surgery is very minimal, but I do think it's very important for trans people to be vigilant and to make sure that their health is taken care of in all aspects, not just HRT and not just having medically transitioning goals met. All parts of your health matters and doing those self-examinations are very important as well. I think the next really big aspect of trans research, trans healthcare research, is actually figuring out the percentage of breast cancer risk that it gets reduced to after having top surgery. I think this will give a lot of peace of mind for um, trans masculine, non-binary people and transgender men when they make that decision to have top surgery done. Anyways, I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you found this video helpful. Please be sure to share this information with someone who may benefit from it. Please like, subscribe, share this video, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and the little activities I do in my social media. And I'll see you on the next one. This is Ben.